Hey guys, it's Miss Jamie here with Bonita County Libraries. I thought that I would share another fairy tale with you this week. Now we decided that we were going to share stories about dinosaurs, so I do have a story about a dinosaur, but it connects with my fairy tale, and you'll see in the next um, the next segment. But I wanted to share this story first, called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, this one is retold by James Marshall. I love his illustrations. I've loved him since I was a kid. So thank you for letting us read this. Um, and we are going to learn about opposites. So the opposite um, of high is low, right? What's the opposite of hot? Cold, that's right. What's the opposite of hard? Soft, that's right. What's the opposite of go? Stop. You guys are so smart. You know all of these opposites. You guys are fantastic. So we're gonna read this book, but first I thought I would share the sign for bears with you. So the sign for bear is really easy. You just take your hands like this. We're gonna make some claws, right? And we're gonna cross our arms and kind of scratch ourselves twice. When you do it twice, it means bear. So this is the sign for bear. So we are going to read Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? So let's read this book. You guys probably already know the story, which will be great because then you can, when we read our next story, you'll see all the differences in it. Once there was a girl named Goldilocks. What a sweet child, someone said. That's what you think, said the neighbor. The neighbor knew Goldilocks. And Goldilocks had a tendency not to listen. She didn't like to listen to adults. She didn't like to listen to advice and it tended to get her in trouble. Even when there were signs that said, don't do something, don't go somewhere, she didn't want to listen. She just did whatever she wanted to do. And sometimes that can get you in trouble, right? So look, here she went out on a walk. Mom said, you've got to get out of the house. You're driving me crazy. She goes on a walk and she sees a sign that says shortcut. But on that sign that says shortcut, it also has other signs that say danger, very risky, not a good idea, turn back, go the other way. But did Goldilocks listen? Nope, she decided she was gonna take that shortcut. Now meanwhile, deep in the woods, there was a house with three bears that were living in there. Right? Do you see those three bears? There was a mama bear, a papa bear, and a baby bear. And they were all gathered around the table, they were getting ready to eat porridge. But when Papa Bear took a bite of his porridge, it was so hot, it scalded his tongue. Look, look right there. He took that bite and now his tongue is on fire and he's blowing out smoke, right? So he said, we cannot stay here. We are gonna go on a bike ride. We're gonna let this porridge cool down because I don't want anyone else to get hurt. So they hop on their bikes and they leave. Well, a few minutes later, wouldn't you know that Goldilocks comes in the house and the first thing she sees, now, we might be wondering, why did she go in that house? The door was unlocked, so she decided just to go. She's a little nosy and she doesn't like to listen, right? So she didn't see why she couldn't go in someone else's house without knocking on the door. So she just went right in and wasn't she lucky that those bears were not just sitting there, right? But what she found was the three bowls of porridge. So she starts with the biggest bowl of porridge. And when she takes a bite, it is super duper hot so she tosses it away no i don't want it oh my god it's so hot so then she goes to the next bowl which is a little bit smaller it's not as big it's like a medium-sized bowl and when she takes a bite of that it was way too cold Ooh, oh my gosh it was so cold so she did not want that but then she got to baby bears bowl of porridge that third bowl of porridge and it was neither too hot nor too cold it was perfect and so she gobbled that porridge up oh my gosh she ate all that porridge well she was feeling full she was satisfied and when i eat a lot of food i like to take a nap afterwards or i have to sit down at least right so she went into the living room and she noticed that there were some chairs there well, she sat in the biggest chair. Look how big that chair is, ginormous. She sat there and it was too hard. It was not comfortable at all. And she could not find a spot. So she decided, I'm gonna try another chair. So she goes into Mama Bear's chair. And this chair is not as big as Papa Bear's. Um, it's definitely not hard, but it is so soft that look, when she sits in it, she just falls right into it. So there, she does not like this chair. She didn't think she was ever going to get out, but when she finally did, she found Baby Bear's 
chair. It was perfect size for her. It even rocked a little bit. So she was loving it. It wasn't too soft. It wasn't too hard. It was just right. So she's sitting there rocking, rocking, rocking. And then all of a sudden that rocking chair breaks. So she breaks the chair. Now what will she do? Well, she's tired of dealing with the chair. So she decides, I'm going to go upstairs and explore. There's got to be a bed up here, right? So she does find a bed. And she finds Papa Bear's bed first. But it's too high. Look, when she's trying to sleep, she's essentially standing on the bed right so she did not like that so she goes to the next bed and this bed look at her her head is way down low so that first bed she her head was up too high she couldn't sleep the next bed it was down too low so all the blood was rushing to her head she couldn't sleep she did not like that but then she found a perfect bed and guess whose room baby bear's room right she loved that bed she got right in now look how messy baby bear's room is does your room happen to look like that i hope not i hope you clean it up if it does right you don't need to sleep with all those books and bears and toys all over the place look at that room well she loved that and she fell right to sleep well wouldn't you know as she was falling asleep the bears came home and what did they see the porridge well Someone has been eating my porridge, said Papa. And Mama said, well, someone's been eating my porridge. And Baby Bear said, well, someone's been eating my porridge and it's all gone. And then they make their way into the living room and they sit in their chairs. And Papa Bear says, ah, someone has been sitting in my chair. And Mama Bear says, well, someone's been sitting in my chair. And Baby Bear, what does he say? Well, someone's been sitting in my chair and it's broken now. So now he has no porridge left and his chair is broken. Well, then they decide to go upstairs. And what did they find up there? Papa Bear sat on his bed, laid down, and he said, Oh, no, no, someone was in here. I do not like this. Someone was in my bed. So Mama went in her bed and look, she doesn't look happy either. Someone was in my bed. And what did Baby Bear say? Well, someone was in my bed and they're still there sleeping. And all of a sudden, Goldilocks heard the bear's voices. She woke up with a start, her eyes popped open. And do you know what she did? She ran and hopped out the window and ran all the way home. And they never saw Goldilocks again. Whoa, she got really lucky that those bears weren't there the first time and that she was able to get out so quickly. So what did you think of that book? Did you like it? I hope you did. I hope you're going to like our next book. And when I read it, go ahead and see what is different between the two books. Does Goldilocks meet the bears? Does she sit on some comfy chairs, some not too comfy chairs? Does she have a nice bed? Does she eat porridge? What happens in the book? What similarities do you see and what differences? So I can't wait for you to read this next story with me and see what you think. All right, I'll see you at the next story. All right, since you now know the real story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, I thought I would read you a fractured fairy tale. So a few weeks ago, we read a fractured fairy tale for the Three Little Pigs. We heard the story of the Three Little Pigs and then we read a story um, called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, and it was told from the point of the view of the wolf. So this time, we're gonna read a fractured fairy tale about Goldilocks, but instead of three bears, she's going to meet three dinosaurs. And I thought before I read the book, I would show you the sign for dinosaur. So now that we know the sign for bear, right? Dinosaur, you're gonna lay your um, non-dominant hand flat, so we're gonna pretend that this is the ground, and then we're gonna take this other hand, we're gonna cup our fingers like that so we make a little head, and we're gonna walk our dinosaur along so it looks like he's walking on the dirt. So this is the sign for dinosaur. So we're gonna read Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. Perfect. In this book, you might recognize some of the illustrations is by Mo Willems. Um, he writes the pigeon books and piggy and elephant books. So I really like reading his books because he always tries to put the pigeon in there. And we'll see, I found the pigeon three times. We'll see if you can find the pigeon more than I can. Maybe he's somewhere I didn't notice. So I will make sure to show you the pictures and you can see if you can find the pigeon too. So Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. And what sound does a dinosaur make? 
That's right, he roars. Can you roar like a dinosaur? Roar! Give me your best dinosaur roar. Roar! Oh my gosh, that was a crazy roar. Oh, you guys are fantastic. You're so loud, I could hear you all the way over here. That's amazing. How did you get to make a roaring sound so loud? All right, you ready for the book? Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Let's see what happens. Oh, and I like, remember Miss Jamie and her end pages? Love the end pages. What does this say? It says Goldilocks and the three naked mole rats. Goldilocks and the three elephants. Goldilocks and the three giraffes. Goldilocks and the three lions. Goldilocks and the three terrible dinosaurs. They've come up with a whole bunch of different titles and they've marked them all off because they like Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. That's what they decided to come up with. I think it would have been kind of fun to see Goldilocks and the three lions or the three giraffes. What do we have here? Oh, we have a mom and a dad. And we've got a little dinosaur down here, right? Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa dinosaur, mama dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. Hmm, that's a little different than Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? It was a papa bear, a mama bear, and baby bear, right? But now we have just some dinosaur visiting from Norway. It's kind of silly. And the sign here says, home sweet dinosaur home. And look at that phone. That is a ginormous phone. But I guess you need a ginormous phone if you're a dinosaur, right? Wow. Um, one day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Let's see the picture. You can see what they're doing. Right? Papa Bear is in the kitchen making pudding. Do you notice anything else on that page? Maybe in the cookie jar? Oh, yep, you found him. You found Pigeon, right? Found the Pigeon in the cookie jar. So Papa Bear is making chocolate pudding. I love chocolate pudding. And Mama Dinosaur and the dinosaur from Norway are making beds and putting chairs in position. Hmm, seems a little strange, right? Is that what the three bears did? No, they just made porridge, right? They made porridge and it was too hot, too cold. Um, so they left, right? But this time, these dinosaurs are setting everything up. Hmm, I wonder who they are expecting. And I like, look, they've got thermometers in here testing, they've got ice. They really have made this pudding to varying temperatures. They're all different temperatures, right? Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. I guess that wasn't very loud, I think it was it. Oh boy, right? Loud, booming voice. This is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, uh, someplace else says Papa. <laughs> says Mama Dinosaur. Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by or our unlocked home while we are uh, uh, someplace else. Hmm, they're acting kind of suspicious, aren't they? They're really weird. <laughs> and then look at this dinosaur. Look at his laughs. They look much different, right? It says, ha 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 ha. Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. Do you think it was a polite expression? He looks like he has a maniacal laugh going on right there. Well, the three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods right outside the house waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Nope, that's not what those dinosaurs were doing. Nope, nope. They were just going out someplace else. And sure enough, about five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. And you see her running. Do you see the dinosaurs? Can you find them? You did. You found them. Great. Where'd you find them? In the trees, right? They're all hiding in there. Now, right here we have a sign, and it says, point two miles to a trap. But then someone, I'm thinking maybe the dinosaurs, crossed out the word trap and wrote 1.2 miles to a very nice house. Hmm, that seems a little odd. And then there's a sign, getting closer. 
Do you think Goldilocks should keep going? I don't think she should. I don't think so. And we already know the story. She definitely shouldn't. Well, just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind, right? Because that's what the the wind sounds like all the time. And then there was a loud noise that was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa! The trap has not yet sprung! But that could have been a rock falling, right? That's what rocks sound like. Or a squirrel. What do you think? I don't think it was either of those. I think it was the dinosaurs. Well, either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. Do you know anyone like that? Do you know any little girls like that or little boys like that that don't like to listen? Hmm. Hmm, I can't think of any. Do you guys know any? Hmm. Who's sitting next to you? Do they like to listen? (laughs) Well, you want to know why she doesn't listen? She just doesn't like to take advice. She's never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as she saw the open door, what did Goldilocks do? She went right in. I mean, there's even a mat here to wipe your feet on. It says, welcome. But it also says, tee hee hee, like they're laughing, Mm, those dinosaurs. So she probably should listen to advice, right? She probably should listen to those warnings. Because what happens if you go into places that you don't know, right? You've got to take care of those warnings. You've got to listen to mom and dad. I wish Goldilocks had. She could have avoided all of this. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Can you smell the pudding? Oh, I love the smell of chocolate pudding. I love chocolate pudding. And look, look at the expression on her face. She loves that smell. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Right, dinosaurs have really tall counters because they're really tall, so I bet it's a long way up. And then, wouldn't you know, there just happened to be a ladder sitting right on the floor, left there. Certainly not on purpose, right? So she takes that ladder, and look, she climbs up to the top of that countertop, and she finds the pudding. That pudding, look how big a bowl of pudding that is. I would love to eat a bowl of pudding that that big. I'd love to swim in a bowl of pudding that big. That would be so much fun. I could swim and eat at the same time. Well, the first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? Now, is that what happened in the story? Is that what happened with Goldilocks and the Three Bears? No, right? It was too hot, so she said, ow, she burned her tongue, she didn't eat it. But not this girl, not this Goldilocks. She's eating all of that pudding. Well, then she got to the second bowl of pudding, and it was too cold. But you know what? Who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. So she ate that whole bowl of chocolate pudding, too. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right. But Goldilocks was on such a roll by now that she hardly even noticed the temperature. She just devoured it. Wow, look at that. Papa dinosaurs, mama dinosaurs, and the dinosaur from Norway. All those bowls, all that pudding. Oh, I bet she's gonna have a tummy ache after all that pudding. Well, soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole wide world of dinosaurs. Chocolate-covered girl bonbons. Nope, not not our dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room, so she decided to climb down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. And let's see, let me show you this picture. Let's see, can you find the pigeon in the picture? Yep, he's back in the cookie jar, right? He's in the cookie jar. Good catch. So now you can see that Goldilocks has gone out of the kitchen she's in the living room and she sees chairs and what happened in our story with Goldilocks and the three bears right there was a chair that was not very comfortable one that was too soft and one that was just right well look what happens here she's got this first chair was too tall the second chair was still too tall but the third chair 
was still way too tall. <laughs> so Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair. So she hiked over to the bedroom. And when she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here, groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. But are they bears that live there? They're dinosaurs, right? So they need really big beds. Well, just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Who could that voice have belonged to? Do you see anyone that could have said something like that? Or would have said something like that? That's right. Look at you. You found him in the window, right? All the dinosaurs are in the window watching Goldilocks. Well, Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. And she noticed something. Remember that sign at the beginning of the house? Normally those signs say, home sweet home, but what did this one say? Home sweet dinosaur home. And that's when it clicked. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. And look at the back door, there's a mat. Remember the one at the front door said, welcome, with a laugh. This one says, wipe your talons. Right, instead of wipe your feet, because dinosaurs have talons. Well, just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, now, or charge, or Norwegian expression for chewy bonbon time. Oh, and look at them. They are running through that door, tripping over each other. But they were too late. Goldilocks was out the door. And let's see, can you spot some a secret guest in this page too? Did you find the pigeon? He's not in the cookie jar this time, right? Where is he? That's right. He's right there in the photo frame next to the dinosaur lamp. I really like that dinosaur lamp. But he's right there in the photo frame. And I really like this sign right here, this poster. It says, we are natural gas. I love it. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were these three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. Oh, man, they didn't even get the girl. And the moral of this story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story leave right so what did goldilocks do she went back to the three little bears right because she doesn't want to be in goldilocks and the three dinosaurs those dinosaurs would have eaten her and the moral for the dinosaurs is lock the back door right if they had just locked the door she never could have escaped <laughs> look how sad they are Silly book. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Mo Willems, for letting us read this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's story time. Next week, I might be back in the library doing story time. We'll see. Um, we will open up our book drops on Monday. So if you guys have any books you want to return to the library, please stop by and drop them in our book drop. We'll be starting curbside mm -hmm. delivery or curbside pickup the following week on the 22nd of June. Um, and just stay in touch with us on social media so you can find out when we'll let you guys back in the building. I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your weekend and have fun. I'll see you next week. And I've got a special surprise for next week. So tune in. See ya.